Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm Virginia, the founder, CEO of Luat Limited, and I'm here tonight to talk about a new kind of toilet. Now, um, digestion is something that we all do and that we all take for granted and that we're all doing right now. And even on days when you feel like you might not have been very productive, you still produce about one and a half liters of excrement. Now, um, this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. And what do we do with that waste? Um, it has a lot of potential value. The waste that we produce is enough to light our homes in the evenings or to cook our dinner and also to fertilize the food that we eat. And yet, um, we're flushing it down the toilet with drinking water. So I want everybody to start imagining a world where we don't do that. And instead, we have a completely different relationship with this stuff that each and every one of us is producing every day. So this is the flush toilet. And we all take it for granted. Um, we quote unquote pray to the porcelain gods. That's an expression you might have heard. It's a fixture in our lives and in our homes that we've had since the Victorian era, and it has not changed. Why hasn't it changed is a question that also I have been thinking about for a long time. Um, there's a relationship which is part of our history now. There's an aesthetic which is called the excretory aesthetic, which Ellen Lepton and J. Abbott Miller pinpointed in a book in the 1990s called The Bathroom, The Kitchen, and the Aesthetics of Waste, which is about streamlining. Um, the industrial design of the 1930s, which was associated with speed and fluid dynamics and new machines, entered homes in bathrooms and kitchens at the beginning. And this is because the whole concept of digestion was becoming very intimately entwined with the concept of rapid processing of bodily fluids, moving things through efficiently and quickly, and then taking them away to unseen infrastructures. But then, what are those infrastructures? And why are we using all this water to take our waste away when we could also be doing something different with it? A lot of the time, where that waste is going is into the sea, untreated. This is in countries like the United States and the United Kingdom. $20 billion a year goes into maintaining the US sewer systems. And we're still discharging a lot of untreated sewage. So this is a really huge problem, and it's a problem that affects people all over the world. This is a toilet in Madagascar, in Antananarivo, the capital city. It's the little building with the kind of piece of fabric wrapped around it. For two and a half billion people in the world, there's no sewerage at all, and there's actually no access to toilets. So there's a tremendous health problem that results from that. It's the leading cause of illness and death amongst children in developing countries is related to untreated sewage. And yet, we can't look to addressing that problem the way that we've gotten used to addressing it, praying to the porcelain gods, um, you know, building these sanitation infrastructures with, waste, with flushing wastewater to the sea and not treating the waste properly and not harvesting what we could be harvesting from it, which is energy and fertilizer. So, what kind of technologies are going to come into place to address this issue? Um, leapfrog technologies, new kinds of technologies that bypass the existing thing. So cellular phones are a great example of a leapfrog technology that made landlines obsolete in a lot of countries where they hadn't built landlines yet. And that's where sanitation is going. There's going to be decentralized sanitation solutions and sanitation solutions that don't require water and that produce commodities from the human waste that we all produce, which is really all about changing a relationship which each and every one of us has. So I think there's a really exciting opportunity for introspection alongside the innovation which I'm talking about tonight. So what we have is a waterless toilet system that generates energy. And I think energy is a really interesting commodity to associate with human waste because it's like the intrinsic antidote it's totally different from how we think of, you know, the S word. It's, um, it's odorless, it's invisible, it's immediately useful, it's what we all rely on. So what we have is a waterless toilet system that makes toilet use totally clean and nice, and at the same time links up a toilet 
to an anaerobic digester so that that waste can be converted to fuel and fertilizer. So our toilet, the way it works is it packages human waste in biodegradable film. And we've developed a unique sealing process so that odor is completely not part of the user experience. And at the same time, the bowl is clean every time when you visit the toilet, which is really important. We first tested this toilet with users here in London. And it's really meeting the standards of people like us who have been wanting you know, something like a flush toilet that has that same benefit of taking your waste out of sight and also not having any bad smells and having a totally hygienic experience. So this is a book called The Humanure Handbook. And um, this is something that actually, the whole idea of sort of humanure is something that our toilet doesn't really feel like when you visit it and when you use it because you don't think about humanure. Um, and at the same time, it's part of how our system works and it's really important. So I wanted to talk about this, this beautiful idea that this guy, Joseph Jenkins, writes about in this book. Because um, he talks about how cleaning up after yourself is a way of exercising the human spirit. And he has this revelation because he gets invited to speak by a bunch of nuns called the Sisters of Humility. And he's become this amazing guru on composting toilets. And he's like, why do a bunch of nuns want me to talk to them about composting toilets? And they say, it's because as the Sisters of Humility, we see a really important connection in the word root between humility, humanity, and humus, which is the, a word for soil and which is the connection between soil and the stuff that comes out of us every day. So there's a humble act is, that's as part of this as well, and it's about, it's about changing our perspectives. Another way to look at it is this. Um, Henry Miller wrote about taboos. Whenever a taboo is broken, something good happens, something vitalizing. He added to that that taboos, after all, are only hangovers the product of diseased minds, you might say, of fearsome people who hadn't the courage to live. And I think that the idea of this vitalizing force, this vitalizing human force around changing our perspectives to our own waste is really important. And it's really central to what keeps us motivated when we think about reinventing the toilet. So, What's most exciting is that it's happening right now in Madagascar, in the capital city, Antananarivo. Um, my company got some funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to implement pilot systems there. And we already have a system up and running now for a year. We call the toilet the energy unit. Uh, this is the business here. This gentleman runs the toilet as a business, and it's linked to a small-scale anaerobic digester, which produces fuel and produces a liquid called digestate, which is then sold on for conversion into fertilizer. His business is selling energy products and toilet visits to people in the community so that people can come and use the toilet, and they can also at the same time charge their phones, get hot water. We're looking at a whole range of different ways to commoditize that energy and to keep that link between energy and toilets really physical and really real. We are also going to be introducing Luat systems for UK festivals in the, the coming summer of 2014. So that means that we'll be able to have toilets which are a great, clean, environmentally friendly alternative to chemical portable toilets, and at the same time, charge our mobile phones from the waste that we produce. These phones are being charged at the Antananarivo Energy Unit. And what I think is really exciting about this is that we're linking toilets to connectivity, which is one of the great things about being human. So I wanted to close with this image, which is a woman named Mahandri who purchased hot water from our unit a number of times. She was eight months pregnant, and she didn't have hot water at home, so she was using it to bathe. Um, I'm really proud of this because our system made her life better in this really simple, important way, and that's what we hope that our toilet systems can continue to do as we develop and scale and grow the business. So thank you so much.